Good morning. North Carolina Pepper here. I mentioned to everybody that I was going to be doing another video. Um, the other video, we were talking about getting uh, magnetic filings out of the earth. That will be for a time or project that you can't use steel wool. What we're going to do here <clears throat> is make do-it-yourself oxygen absorbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Or hand warmers. But we're going to do oxygen absorbers. Now you're going to ask. I can't imagine a time. Someone, someone might say this. I can't imagine a time when oxygen absorbers can't be found due to the, uh, the collapse. Or Tiawaki or long term shift of fan. But then someone would say, you know, well, um, I can't imagine why I would need absorbers in a world like that either. And that's kind of a valid point. But I can tell you why you can't exactly need one. I think oxygen absorbers would be important and shit hit the fan. Prepping will be more important than ever. Um, well, you're going to have to make decisions on the longevity <clears throat> of your food. Basically on a daily basis. Uh, many preppers won't won't have thoughts of storing food after she hit the fan. I mean, there's you know there's a canning and all that stuff and salting, etc. But I would rather not um, or I would rather take and crush whatever acorns into flour for a whole year and and put in my oxygen source and put in my oxygen absorber and uh, be done with it. So, um, that's one reason you'd use this. Um, right now, oxygen absorbers are really cheap. And, um, you should get them. You should get them while you can and store them. But there would come a time, if if there was ever a super long-term thing like an EMP that just really bad. <clears throat> Eventually, you'd run out of steel wool and oxygen absorbers. In which case, you'd have to get your own magnet filings. And you get salt water from the ocean. Now, one gram of rust will pretty much absorb uh, 300 milliliters of oxygen. So, oh, where's my notes? Hold on. Okay, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Don't be the guy that went to open his buckets and find they went bad. You know, he'll wish that he hadn't stepped over a dollar to pick up a dime. And use very in inexpensive proper materials, oxygen absorbers and mylar liners, to put it with food. And he'll kick himself in the ass for wasting $100 of food and trying to save a buck <coughs> due to poor planning. You know, and then his family can shell it. So don't do this. This is for way down the line. Or if he doesn't want to make hand warmers. But this is for way down the line when you can't get oxygen absorbers. When the ones you've had stored up have ran out and you need to put some away for a couple months, like flowers and stuff. Um, the O2 absorber is pretty simple. It's a chemical reaction, basically rusting iron rust. It absorbs oxygen when it does. <coughs> um, generally, it's you can take 6 grams of iron filings or steel wool. And six grams of sea salt, and that'll give you a five or six gallon bucket worth of filings or um, absorption. So what we're gonna do <coughs> is you take five grams of steel wool. I'm gonna put it in a paper towel. In this case, old um, coffee bags, single servings. Tape them up in there. I'm gonna dissolve six grams of salt, um, non-iodized salt, in 100 milliliters of water. And when I'm ready to get to use this, I'm going to take it and put six drops of salt water on the thing and activate it. And that'll be enough for the grain to keep the process going. Now, if you want to do a hand warmer, you would add six grams of charcoal to slow down and attenuate the reaction. And you would add something like uh, plastic pellets, uh, BBs, little, little bits of gravel, just to put a little air spaces in there to slow it down and let it keep going for a longer period of time. So basically, you know, that's that's pretty much how we're gonna do this. Um, I guess you could use maybe um, sawdust as well, but still. Anyway, let's get to this here. Let me set everything up and 
Let me go ahead and mix them. It's real simple, and then I'll I'll time lapse video it of it shrinking down the bottle over here. I'll put it in the bottle. And I'll time lapse the video so you can watch it shrink on down. But basically, it's steel wool or iron and salt and water to make it rust. So you could use iron filings or this. It just does the weight. And that's it for five gallons. So you know, one gallon would be one gram. Uh, basically, it was over about 30% of the volume. So, based on that per gram. Yeah, per gram. Okay, three hundred liters. Alright, so, I'll be right back. Let me set all this up and we'll get started. Okay, so we want five grams of salt, which we're going to dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. So, let's see if we can get this in here. Let me zoom in on that. Let me just let me zoom in there for you. Close enough. 5.4 grams. So let's go ahead and dissolve that. Zoom out. We're gonna put that in 100 milliliters of water. Here's a jar there. Tear the scale. We want five grams of steel wool. Or yeah. Actually, I'm gonna go two grams. In a lower packet here. That's 2.3 grams there. Forgot for a minute I wasn't doing a five gallon bucket. But the water con the salt concentration is still fine. So I'm gonna take all this and kind of ball it up a little bit. We're gonna ball this up and put it in a little little bag. Now this is way, way more than it needs to be. But it will really crush down that bottle. If I can get it in my container here. And if you wanted a hand warmer, you would actually add charcoal and something for better airflow. We just want this to rust up. Then I'm going to tape it. Just like this. You could also staple. There'd be no problem with that. So there we go. So let me get my container ready and I'll I'll do that part next. Okay, I'm gonna use a food saver bag. These are the resealable ones. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. I'm gonna fill it up with rice and then I'll set it on, I'll activate it and set it on top. Let's go ahead and do that. Five drops. Is that camera? It is. Okay, I want that soak in. And as soon as I feel it like getting hot, I'll put it in the bag. I also want to soak in because I want that moisture on my uh, rice. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. 
Here we go. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to get hot before I stick it in. So give me some moment. All right. Um, getting kind of warm here. At 135 right now. So let's go ahead and set that in there. The bag. Put that down like that. I'll seal the bag out. Shut the press. Stay sealed. Now we'll just let it go. Let me set this up for time lapse. That's good enough, I guess. Alright, and we'll time lapse down, and then I'll be back. Alright. So, it's getting pretty warm. It's about 110 now, 109. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there, and we'll set time lapse here. Okay, had to come back to this. The uh, the memory filled up on the phone last night around midnight, so I don't know how exactly how long it took, but here it is. It's all vacuumed on down, as you can see. Very hard in there. So there it is. It's all vacuumed in there, all rusted up in there. You can see. So there you go. That's a do-it-yourself uh, oxygen absorber for shit hit the fan. Or a time when there is no more. Um, let's zoom in there. And that's um, some leaf in there. I forget what it is. Uh, it's supposed to prevent bugs, but I don't know if it ever did or didn't. Who knows? Just never had bugs. So there you go, guys. Uh, DIY uh, oxygen absorber or hand warmer, depending on what you do. All right, North Carolina Pepper. Please rate and subscribe.